The Institute for Faith and Freedom at Grove City College presents Meet the Scholars with your host, Senior Student Fellow Libby Krieger. to season two of Meet the Scholars. My name is Libby Krieger and today I'm joined by Dr. Brian Dellinger. Dr. Dellinger is, is an associate professor of computer science here at Grove City College where he earned his undergraduate degree. He went on to earn his PhD from the North Carolina State University and much of his research center, centers around artificial intelligence and models of consciousness. Thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure, thank you for having me. So my first question is how did you end up coming back to Grove City College to teach after you graduated? So I had graduated from the college in 2007 I moved down to North Carolina to do my graduate work. In 2012, May of 2012, I married my wife and moved up to live with her in Virginia. Uh, and about a month after that, got a call from the chair of the computer science department, who I had known in my time here, and he said, we've got an opening, you should come apply for it. And I had wanted at some point to come to work somewhere like the college, somewhere that had a core Christian commitment that was primarily interested in doing undergraduate teaching. I knew that was the sort of place I was looking for eventually. I just, I didn't expect it to actually be the college. So I came back up, I did the interview. They said, this seems great. You should come work for us. I said, that's great. <laughs> Except for the part where I just got married a month ago and my wife still has a year left on her graduate work. And I, I cannot, I cannot move nine hours away from her a month after the wedding. And they thought about it, and they came back and they said, well, we'll hold the position for you for a year. Come back to us in 2013, start the job then, which was a tremendous blessing for me, a great amount of work for them, and I'm, I'm forever grateful that they were willing to do that. Yeah, it's certainly exciting to see how it's come full circle for you. Um, and so some, as someone who's done a lot of research into technology, how would you say that has changed our understanding of other humans? Sure. So... You know, I think there's a, a tendency, if you look historically, that we always try to understand each other in terms of whatever the latest technology is, right? So you can find historically points where we interpreted human beings as basically being big sacks of different kinds of fluid, and if you had too much fluid, well, that was what was wrong with you. Uh, later, we thought of each other as being something like clockwork. Today, the dominant metaphor is arguably that human beings are something like a computer. I think that gives some useful insight, but I think it can also mislead us, right? I think we obscure the limitations of what a computer is and does and how human beings are remarkable in consequence of that. Well, now looking into the future, kind of building off of that question, what do you think the impacts of technology are that we are yet to see? So that's a little bit the million dollar question, right? If, uh, if anybody could get a reliable answer to that early enough, they wouldn't need to be teaching, right? They'd be sitting on their enormous pile of money instead. Um, but I think, I think there's a decent argument that the trajectory we're on right now is one of increasing, increasing connection speed and a, a, a seeming need to react to everything. It seems like that's unsustainable, right? It seems like the cultural understanding of that as it stands right now, it just can't accelerate the way it has been too much further in that direction without something breaking. I don't know what the something's going to be, but my suspicion is that, there, that we're in an unstable state right now, that there's bound to be some kind of state change in what normal looks like in our interactions with technology somewhere in the not too distant future. Certainly a fascinating question, and I'd love to hear your insight on that. Um, now, and to connect this a little bit more to what Faith and Freedom we do here, what do you see as the connection between, or the relationship between faith and technology? Sure. So technology is a force multiplier, right? Everything that you do, it makes it easier to do. I think technology offers us an unprecedented opportunity to, to have the ability to spread the gospel, to spread the truth in ways that have never been possible before, right? I, I can only imagine that the Apostle Paul would have gladly given his teeth to have the ability to send an email instead of having a letter carried by hand hundreds of miles away. Um, it's a multiplier for good and bad, right? Mm -hmm. So there's benefits as well as consequences there. There certainly are new tensions that come out of, well, I, I think the joke is they say that everybody's famous on the internet for a day and your job is to never be the guy whose day is today, right? You never want to be the person who's internet famous right now. Um, 
I think that's going to pose an increasing challenge for us. I think as our faith commitments become more out of step with the culture, I think that's going to make it more difficult not for us increasingly to be famous in the way we don't want to be, where disproving eyes turn on us from all directions. Um, and I think that's going to pose a difficulty that will challenge us to try to remain consistent in our commitments to, to Christ, to Christianity, um, despite that increasing pressure. But I think it would be a mistake to focus only on that and not to see the opportunity to afford us as well. Yeah, I really like how you touched on the dual nature of the, both the positive and the negative side that we can use as Christians um, to, to better our world. Um, so last question here today, what is next for you? Do you have any projects or research coming up? So my very early draft project right now that I'm really just sketching an outline towards, uh, as you said, my background is in artificial intelligence and models of cognition, models of thinking. I think one of the places where we are a little bit behind the gun is in our engagement with Christians on the subject of artificial intelligence and particularly on what we, what we as Christians, as people who do believe that a human being is more than just the material, what we might be able to say about the, the possibilities and the limitations of theoretical AI. And so I'm taking early notes towards a book that would, uh, that would hopefully explore that subject more and would try to say something interesting about what we should expect there and what, as Christians, we should believe is plausible and consistent with the way we understand the world to work. Sure, I think it's a really, there's a need for seeing the technology field in the lens of Christianity. So really excited to see what you come up with there. Thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure. Thank and you And thank you me. so much for tuning in to season two of Meet the Scholars. If you haven't seen the rest of our videos, head to our YouTube channel and check out our website at faithandfreedom.com.